Ether 314. Remember this verse? I am the Father and the Son. Well, I guess, uh, well, guess what? In the next verse, it says, And never have I showed myself unto man whom I have created, for never has man believed in me as thou hast. Seest thou that ye are created after mine own image? Yea, even all men were created in the beginning after mine own image. Behold, this body, which ye now behold, is the body of my spirit, and man have I and man have I created after the body of my spirit. And even as I appear unto thee to be in the spirit, will I appear unto my people in the flesh. This is called a theophany. See next page. This verse shows that God, the Father, has no flesh and bones. Only Christ is the image of the invisible God. Colossians 1.15 it looks like even the Book of Mormon agrees that the only one in the Trinity with an image that you can see is Christ, who had a body prepared for him in the fullness of time. Hebrews 10.5 says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldst not but a body thou hadst prepared for me. The Trinity had no flesh and bones until Mary had a baby boy. Even after his resurrection from the dead, he proved he had flesh and blood as we have. But after he ascended to his father and returned, he could pass through the locked doors, etc. Try that with your flesh and blood. He had to, he had to have flesh and blood before that to die in our place on the cross for all of our sins. I know you don't believe, Paul, about that. You think it was just those in the past. I know. You would deny that we can have eternal life now because present and future sins are not, uh, not atoned for. We have to keep from sinning or repent real fast, as my former bishop said, and endure to the end this way. Salvation is up to us, real salvation that is, exaltation through Mormon works. I know you are going to say what of his, I know you're going to say what of his appearance in the Old Testament. Those are called theophanies. And if Christ had a body of flesh and blood that could pass through locked doors and disappear, what does that tell you about the ability of the Trinity to do anything they, the one God, wants? Richard, are you going to say, hey, God, you can't do that. You're making my reason stare, Ether 316. You still prefer to believe that an unchanging intelligence somehow organized itself in the beginning with no father or mother and became the first spirit child on a pre-existing universe, the first one, and then somehow passed probation among other unorganized intelligences to become valiant enough to go to a second planet or universe where at least it wasn't a negro but white and delightsome and follow the joseph smith hat plan which thank the organizer was restored to us in the early 1800s trillions of trillions of years and light years later how did this unchanging intelligence since it was the first have a mother and father Remember, we just read in the Book of Mormon that there was no shadow of variableness of, in this intelligence who would someday merit having all authority over his own universe so that he, God, could say there were no Elohim formed before him, neither after him. He knew not any. No eternal family here for his first Elohim, for this first Elohim. He sounds as jealous and exclusive as our Elohim. Do they all deny each other's authority like that, Richard? Maybe he was just trying to get out of those incredible family reunions. <laughs> Here's a verse I'd like you to explain. It makes no sense, according to present-day Mormon belief, that all the cross provided for us was resurrection from death. 
that if we want real salvation, we must work and exalt ourselves. Verse Nephi 9.6 says, Wherefore, all mankind were in a lost and in a fallen state, and ever would be, save they should rely on this Redeemer. Why rely on this Redeemer? All he did was resurrect the. All he did was resurrect everybody. You gotta keep yourself from going to hell. Shouldn't it rather have said, "Be self-reliant. Re rely on him for what? The resurrection. That's a done deal." It seems modern Mormonism does not agree with these verses in Second Nephi, which show that the atonement, even to the lawless. For the atonement, quote, for the atonement satisfieth the demands of his justice upon all those who have not the law given to him, that they are delivered from the awful monster, death and hell and the devil and the lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment, and they are restored to that God who gave them breath, which is the one, which is the holy one of Israel. 2 Nephi 9.29 and 9.26 I mean 2 Nephi 9.26 Just the lucky people that know the law get to go to hell Moroni 8.18 says For I know that God is not a partial God neither a changeable being but he is unchangeable from all eternity to all eternity we learn later in Revelation that the only thing that did not change in his in, in this Mormon God was his intelligence. His intelligence never changed from trillions of trillions upon trillions of years. Just like our intelligence has not changed for trillions and trillions upon trillions of years since we are as everlasting as he is. I mean, our intelligence is as unchanging as his since we are potential Elohim ourselves. Or am I interpreting your book incorrectly, Richard? See also Doctrine and Covenants 20, 12, and 17. It seems that Mormon doctrine is contradicted by Mormon scripture. Richard, I know that in your book you say there are no such things as dispensations. Just like you, Joseph Smith, wrote in the Doctrine and Covenants 130. 22, that, quote, the Father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's. Eight years earlier, in his lectures on faith, in his lecture fifth, he wrote, there are two personages who, consist, who constitute the great, matchless governing and supreme power over all things, by who all things were created and made, that are created and made whether visible and invisible, whether in the earth or um, whether in heaven or uh, heaven on earth or in the earth, under the sun or throughout the immensity of space. What about the boundaries of other billions of Elohim universes? Of Elohim universes. They are the Father and the Son, the Father being a person of spirit. Exclamation for about five. Glory and power glory and power, possessing all perfection and fullness without a body? The Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, a personage of tabernacle, made or fashioned like unto man, or being in the form and likeness of man, or rather, man was formed after his likeness and in his image, and is called the Son because of the flesh. According to, Doc, to DHC, Volume 2, page 180, these lectures were to be published in the Doctrine and Covenants. This was done until 1921, when they were deleted. The reason they were dropped is self-evident. The LDS found it difficult to teach about their God of flesh and bones, with this to contend with too. What a difference eight years makes. I agree that this does not sound like a difference in dispensation like the biblical one of going to faith minus works 
from faith plus works for obedience. No, this is dealing with what God, quote, God, end quote, considers fundamental truth about himself, which the Book of Mormon, as I have adequately, more than adequately, I'm sure, to the point of throwing up, shown from the Book of Mormon itself. I know you believe Joseph Smith to be a true prophet, but how can you have faith in him and in the Book of Mormon at the same time? Joseph Smith believed in a creator. He believed, like the Book of Mormon, that the Father is a personage of spirit, the Great Spirit, as the Book of Mormon put it several times. And then this reversal on the very nature of this unchangeable God to what he wrote in your book a mere eight years later. Where did he get, where did he get his new revelations from? Surely not from the one without shadow of variableness. Did he not believe what came out of the darkness of his hat? In English, even? Well, remember where he found those golden plates that have since disappeared too bad no one else saw them except through the eyes of faith so i guess you don't really have to believe the book of mormon to be a mormon if you can convince yourself that creator really means organizer and everlasting intelligence can still have a mother if all the gods are men then there are no gods if now this is this is powerful if all the gods are men then there are no gods is that not the very definition of the word atheism true mormons in the know are really atheists as richard points as richard pointed out satan never tried to become a god he knew what he was he just wanted our elohim's authority but for the likeness of me, I can't imagine why. He's the one having all the fun. He really enjoys his work. His brother is the one with all the responsibility on his shoulders, including the cross. He doesn't have to keep a billion or so wives pregnant, or, if not that, keep busy organizing, uh, having kids. He doesn't have to bother uh, with... Uh, answering billions of uh, prayers. Satan doesn't have to worry about any of his billions of spirit children. He's a bachelor. His job is to try to keep as many of, quote, them, unquote, as possible from becoming gods. His job is to try to get as many as possible into the lower three strata as possible. And no sweat. Why should he even care that much? Why, why, why should he even care that much? Why should he care if the top heaven gets cluttered up with trillions of gods with men's bodies of flesh and blood, identical to as man is now, except for being infinite? And what gave his older brother authority over him anyway? Why should he go to hell forever just be, just because his older brother told him to go, told him to? His salvation plan. His salvation plan was more biblical than his older brother's anyway, right? Just because Joseph Smith said so. That guy keeps changing his mind. <laughs> just because it is the eternal plan of the gospel. Who said so? Why should he believe this plan over any other authority? Satan is just as eternal as any other intelligence. What gave one intelligence any more authority over any other intelligence? Just, be just because some spirit children were born or organized before others? Is that what gave them their authority? Who set up this most valiant becomes a god system? Was Satan the smartest one after all? Smart enough to realize that he didn't want those incredible family reunions <laughs> where they would all get together every seven millennia or so? <laughs> 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 
with <laughs> with billions of his kids and billions of his dad's kids and billions of his grandson's kids and billions of his grandfather's kids on Kolob? How could Satan reject such good news? No wonder Satan remains unmarried, unlike Jesus Christ, who is a polygamist. It's polygamist, I found out, not polygamist. See, I did learn something in my priesthood meetings. The Mormon gospel, that includes no creator, is not a very attractive proposition to me. I believe there is a creator who is a god, and this god is only a trinity. Not a duality, not a quadrinity, not an infinite amount of gods who are really men with flesh and bones, like us. My biblical God said many times that he never had any parents. His son was never conceived by any flesh and blood man God, but by the Holy Spirit. Sure, it says the Father also, but that is because there is a trinity, get it? Satan is not God's brother. God created Satan. God created all things, including Satan. It's in the book. We are not gods and never will be part of the Trinity Godhead. We have the Trinity dwelling in us if we are Christians, which Joseph Smith would never believe. Nor would Richard, I fear, except that it's biblical. God, uh, Philippians 2, 13, Christ, Colossians 1, 27, and the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. No more, no less. Someday, there will be the promised restoration of all things, including the redemption of our bodies. Until then, when we die, we will be absent from the body, present with the Lord, in a heaven that is so great, Paul, who was caught up to it, as in the future rapture, <clears throat> was told it was unlawful even to talk about it. I'm glad God always... I'm glad, I'm glad God will always be God, and we humans will never be infinite, as Richard says we will. As a cat is happy being a cat, and would be unhappy with a human mind, just so I would be unhappy with an infinite mind. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And that is Jehovah, that is Christ, that is the rock, and Elohim too. Isaiah 55, 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your, th than, you know, than your ways, and my thoughts... Yeah, as the heaven... This is Isaiah 55, 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. One thing I really love about my King James Bible is that it really liberates me and my family and friends from such horrible slavery to false cults like Christian Science, Jehovah's Witness, says Seventh Day Seventh Day Adventism, Catholicism, Pentecostalism, Water Baptism, etc., etc. Because it was given to me to believe it. Philippians 1:29. I am free from all these heresies. For me, it is the sword of the Lord, the anvil, the hammer. It clothes me in the whole armor of God that I may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and the darkness of hate, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What is higher than Mormon headquarters in Salt Lake? To a Mormon. Wherefore, I take, my, I take unto myself the whole armor of God, the Bible, that I may be able to withstand in the evil day that is now. And having done all to stand, I stand, therefore, having my loins girt about with truth, the Bible only, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, not of my own, not of my own, of Christ only, which was imputed to me when I believed Paul. And my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, where God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, and not imputing their trespasses against anybody. Above all, I take the shield of faith, which, because it was given to me by God, can never be taken away. It was not my faith to begin with. Wherefore, I shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Darts? 
Yeah, like Richard saying, there really is no creator. <clears throat> like the Bible is so untrustworthy, we need another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon. Like, I would have to do Mormon works to gain a Mormon heaven and become a man with flesh and blood and an infinite mind, just like, a tr like trillions upon trillions of others before me and trillions upon trillions of gods after me, instead of just being who I am and having my family members like they are without their going off to other universes to be their own gods, too. How horrible and lonely. I'm sorry, I just could not love trillions upon trillions of other gods They, the, the way I love my own small family. The thought is too horrendous, an eternal nightmare, some eternal family, and I am really glad there is a God that loves the world. For God so loved the world, John 3.16, I couldn't do it, and I would not want to be worshipped in my own universe and have to tell my subjects not to worship Elohim from any other universe before me. I would hate to command them to respect only my authority. And then there's that Satan type guy. Is he going to be in every world to try to cut down on those going to the highest level? But really, who cares? I'm free from all this dribble. The Bible is so simple compared to Mormonism. I'm free. I can drink coffee without missing heaven. I'm free from having home teaching where I have to tell people that Mormonism is the only true gospel and that Joseph Smith is a true prophet in spite of the test of all prophets in Deuteronomy. I'm free from having to go to, place, to a place where God's spirit will never dwell, Mormon temples made with hands. Mormonism boasts that it was a restored gospel. What a laugh. Look carefully at first, the second, at first and second Timothy, and you will see what happened right from the beginning. We see the church enjoying the full, full knowledge of the mystery in 1 Timothy. Sadly and soberly see what happens in 2 Timothy. It goes from not yet to now it's here, you can have it. In 1 Timothy it was, of course, we've got it. We've all got it. In 2 Timothy we see the church turned away from the full knowledge of the mystery. Here in 2 Timothy, Paul's last letter, we find the situation that exists in our day. It began almost 2,000 years ago and still exists today. We find Paul, the revealer of the mystery, abandoned. Catholicism reigned. And Mormonism claims to have restored this original Gentile gospel. Ha! Look at Second Timothy 1.15 This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. Who was in Asia? The very people who had read about the dispensation of the grace of God given to Paul. Ephesus was the capital of Asia. The city of Coloss Colossae was in Asia. Paul says all of them have turned away from me. Look at Second Timothy 4, 9 and 10. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas, Paul's co-worker, hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Not only did all the people of Asia turn away from Paul, but now his co-workers were jumping ship. Demas takes off, leaves him in the lurch, and in verses 10 through 12 we read, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with me, with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Titus was Paul's right-hand man, his son of faith. Paul loved Demas, Crescens, and Titus, but they left him. It has always been through sh sledding. It has all been. It has all been tough. It has all been tough sledding for the full knowledge of the Bible mystery and of the truth. <clears throat> Mormonism has understood about one-fourteenth of that mystery, which is a true gospel for today, and they claim to have restored the whole thing. Gaffaw, not only do they not understand it, they bend every effort to fight against it. Like the Catholics, Mormons are, Mormon, Mormons are trying to set up a popish earth-like, earth, 
a popish-like earthly kingdom under Peter, James, and John. Paul is an aberration to both. You both left. You both left Paul from the beginning. Yet you claim that you have restored the true gospel. And Richard denies that there are dispensations in the Bible. Christ, on earth as he as the promise to the circumcision said, circumcision said, I am not sent, but to the lost house of Israel. No dispensations. Christ said to Peter that he was come to die. Peter argued with him. Christ then said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. None of the disciples understood the meaning of the cross until Paul in due time explained it. Mormonism still does not understand it. That is why there will not be a Satan on your own world, Richard. <clears throat> that is why you will not have to die on a cross for the sins of all your spirit children. That is why no one in the trillions upon trillions after Christ in their trillions upon trillions of worlds will have to die on crosses. That is why no one in the trillions upon trillions of worlds before this one had to die on the, any cross for the sins of their spirit children. <coughs> the reason <coughs> is that there is only one God, and he really is God, and not a man. And, not a man. and he is a trinity. Who can predestinate all things, save whom he will on this side of the veil first, as first fruits, and save all men eventually? Some require more punishment than others. He is a real creator of the only universe. He is the only Elohim, the only Jehovah, the only Son of Man, with a small m. We will never be like him with an infinite mind. We will only be like Christ in, thank God, a very limited way. He was in Christ when Christ died as a man. And for us on the cross, in the spirit of Elohim and Jehovah, he went to the prison world, First Peter 3, 18, 19, or 6, by which spirit also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. What? No water baptism for the dead? You mean they did not have to wait 1,830 years for a Mormon temple to live according to God in the spirit? Mormonism has a different Christ, a different God, a different Holy Spirit, and a total, totally different gospel. Biblical Mormonism, come on. In the Bible, our Elohim has no flesh and blood. Our Elohim is, our Elohim is not the Father of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, as he is, our, is of our spirits. It's the Trinity, remember? In the beginning, from everlasting unto everlasting, there has only been one God. One of his parts did not give birth to any of his other parts. But they, the Trinity, were all together, just like John 1, 1 through 3 says. God is Father, and through the Holy Spirit, with no flesh, blood, or bones, gave birth through Mary to the man, Christ Jesus, with no turkey baster necessary, no physical whatever necessary you faithless Mormons <laughs> part of the good news of the cross is that if we are in Christ we are baptized into his death meaning identified with him in his death then when he rose so shall we through simple belief